Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on command blocks in Minecraft. Today we're going to look at the basics of how to get a command block and how to use it in its three most fundamental settings. So let's go ahead and get our first command block. Now I already have one on the ground here, but this is how I got it. Because if you don't know about command blocks yet and you're watching this video to learn about command blocks, the chances are you don't know how to get a command block. So, if you opened up your inventory in creative mode and scrolled around looking for a command block and even tried searching for one, you would never find it. Because the way you get a command block in Minecraft as of version 1.12 is you have to use what's called the give command. Now, if you don't know how to use this command, go ahead and check out my command tutorial series where I have a video dedicated to this single command. Alright, so once we go ahead and get our command block, we can place it on the ground. And I want to point out two things about this particular command block. First off, I want to point out that this command block is orange. The color of this command block indicates that it is currently in the impulse setting. So if you right click on that command block, you can see this very first button is set to the impulse setting. Second, I want to point out that on the actual texture of this block, there is an arrow. Now it's not on every single side, so here's a square. And over here, you have this more diamond shape. But if you look at the tops and the sides of a command block, you can see which way this block is facing. And that'll be important later on when we talk about combining command blocks together. In particular, when we look at the second setting of command blocks, which is called chain. Okay, so now that we're in the second setting, you can see the color has changed to green. This is the color of a chain command block. And if we go ahead and right click on this block, and switch it to its final setting, we'll see that the block changes to purple to indicate that we're now in the repeating setting of the command block. So now that we've talked about how to get into these different settings, let's talk about how they all work. All right, guys, so I have an example set up here for you. This is an impulse command block. It's in the default setting. So as soon as you place it on the ground, you should have identical settings that I have here, impulse, unconditional, and needs redstone. Now, the only thing you'll notice that is different about my command block than the one that you guys are placing if you're following along is that I have a command here already input into the command block. So I'm using a simple say command, and then this is the string or the message that I'm going to say with this command. So if we go ahead and click done, you can see that I've also put a button on the side of this command block, and that's because it's currently in a state that requires it to have redstone. If we look at the command block one more time, you can see that the third setting button says we need redstone. So if we go ahead and use the redstone button, there we go, we've issued our first command from a command block. This is an example of using a simple setup with a command block to run a single command with a redstone impulse. So here we are with another configuration of three command blocks, and you'll see that one of them is in the impulse state while the other two are in the chain state. So let's go ahead and see what is inside each of these blocks. The first one is a simple say command. It says, I want food, whenever the block is activated with redstone. And here we can remind ourselves that this block does indeed need redstone to operate. The next block is chained to the first impulse block. And what this block does is it's going to give us some cooked beef. Now. I want to point out that down here we have some different settings. We have it set to chain, we also have it set to unconditional, and then the lastly we have it always active. Now what these two buttons do is as follows. The unconditional button says that we want this command to run even if the one before it does not successfully run. So in other words, if you hit the button attached to the first impulse block and for some reason the command failed, this block would still receive a redstone signal and it would still execute because we said that it was unconditional. If we set this to conditional, then the first block, the one right before it, would have to successfully execute in order for this block also to execute. So let's set that back to unconditional and take a look at the third block. The third block has the exact same settings as the previous block meaning that the first block, when it executes successfully, will start the next block, chain to it, 
because it's set to unconditional right now, it doesn't matter. It'll automatically execute because of the redstone signal. And then the final block will do the exact same thing as the previous block by executing its command unconditionally. Now, I want to go ahead and hit the button so you guys can see this all in action to make it a little more clear. All right, so three things happened. First, this message was sent to our chat with the say command, I want food. Second, we were given this cooked pork chop or cooked beef. And lastly, the say command also said I was given food. This is an example of how you can use command blocks chained together in order to create some more complicated contraptions for your Minecraft world. Next, we have a repeating command block. This block will do what you think it does. It will repeat its command over and over and over so long as the settings specify. So how we have it right now is set to repeat unconditionally and we have it requiring redstone. Now because it requires redstone, this block is not doing anything right now. Even though it's set to repeat once every game tick, it will not execute unless we provide it with a redstone signal. Now you can either give it a redstone signal or you can use the other setting, which is always active. So let me right click on this block and then left click on this button to set it to always active. Now when we close out, we'll see that our give command is running once every game tick. Okay, let's turn that off. And now let's give ourselves a lever. So we can see how this works with the redstone signal. So currently this lever is not giving this block any redstone signal. However, if we flip it to the on position, our command will run once every game tick. It'll continue to do this until we switch it off. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope this helped you with the basics of Minecraft command blocks. Stay tuned for more videos for advanced uses of Minecraft command blocks. In particular, I'm going to show you a clip of something that I'm working on currently in 1.12. Now, at the time of this recording, this was 1.11, I believe. And so I haven't updated the syntax in these command blocks that make all of this function yet. I'm waiting for 1.13 to come out for that. But anyways, Keep your eye out because this is going to be a new class system that I'm developing in Minecraft. And I'm hoping to make also a program uh, that will allow you guys to make your own spells and classes and everything with a uh, GUI application that will allow you to get the files that you need to put into your Minecraft world to make this run. Anyways, check this out and you can see this is something that you can do with command blocks in Minecraft. If you link together, you know, linked command blocks with impulse, uh, you know, the chain settings and the repeating command blocks and all of those things. If you use all of these things, you can make some pretty cool things. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. And if you have any command block contraptions you want to show off, go ahead and send them my way and I'd be happy to take a look at them. All right. See you in the next video.